Iranians have a long history of ties with the East African coasts. The most significant aspect of these relations is the immigration of a group of Iranians from Shiraz to the coasts and islands of East Africa about 1,000 years ago. The main uh, um, substantial explanation comes from the, the Kilwa Chronicle. One important uh, information that comes from uh, uh, this uh, Portuguese chronicle is that the people who came, they were Iranians. That is very clear because it says that they are from Shiraz, led by Ali bin Hassan. Hello, I'm Mubarak Kenya, and welcome to this edition of Africa Today, which is focusing on the historical immigration of Shirazis from Iran to the East African coasts. We shall briefly look at how this movement influenced the formation of the Swahili culture and civilization. We are also asking what efforts are being made to preserve this tangible heritage. And as you watch, let us know what you think by sending us your views and comments through our email handle. And stay tuned till the end. Iranian immigrants in East Africa. African traditional history recognizes early connections with the Persian Gulf. The most pervasive are stories of origin from Shiraz. Historical accounts tell of the voyage of seven ships manned by a father who left Shiraz with his six sons for East Africa. He later established permanent settlements across a vast region of the eastern coast of Africa. These Iranians from Shiraz had deep and long-standing social and cultural impacts on indigenous people of East and Southern East African coasts. Many elements of Iranian culture and civilization are still visible in parts of today's Somalia, Kenya, Tanzania, Mozambique, and the Comoros. The cultural heritage of Shirazis who settled in East Africa include the celebration of Nowruz, prevalence of Iranian architecture, and the massive influence of Persian in Kiswahili, the main language spoken by East Africans. To discuss the historical immigration of Shirazis from Iran to East Africa, we are joined here in the studio by Professor Amir Bahram Arab Ahmadi. He's a historian and the head of the Central and Southern Africa Studies Department at the University of Tehran. Also joining us from Tanzania is Professor Abdul Sharif of Zanzibar. Professor Abdul Sharif's current research interests is on the history of Zanzibar, the Swahili coast, and the Indian Ocean. We start off with Professor Arab Ahmadi. Thanks a lot for joining us today in our program. Thank you very much. This is a great pleasure of mine to be with you in this program for some minutes. We're also happy to host you. Now, to start off, uh, Professor, Abdul uh, Professor Arab Ahmadi, now, can you uh, tell us uh, briefly about the immigration of Iranians to East Africa, particularly the Shirazis? Yes, of course, uh, before migration of Shirazis to East Africa, which resulted to permanent settlements of them uh, in that part of Africa for quite a number of uh, centuries, yeah. we have had some other uh, historical contact between Iran and East Africa, which yeah. goes back to ancient era, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, actually the time of Achaemenid dynasty and Sassanids. Okay. But talking about migration of Shirazis to East African coast, which yeah. can be considered mm -hmm. as one of the most historical uh, events which has happened uh, between Iran and East Africa in yeah. particular. Uh, very briefly, I can tell you, this historical migration uh, has been taking place in uh, 10th century during the time of al Buya dynasty okay. uh, in Iran, in some part of Iran. Yeah. Uh, under the leadership of uh, someone known as uh, Prince Ali ibn Hassan Shirazi, who was then governor of uh, Fars province. Yeah. And of course, Shiraz was the capital of Fars province. They migrated to East African coast yeah. and settled uh, in a narrow area from today's southern shores of uh, Somali yeah. right up to northern today's Mozam uh, Mozambique, Mozambique, including oh. uh, today's Kenya, of course, coastal area coastal and islands areas. only. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, today's Kenya, Tanzania, Zanzibar Archipelago, as well as uh, Como Archipelago. Okay. Yeah, and they made, as I mentioned, and you mentioned too, they establish um, permanent settlement yeah. in quite a number of islands and coastal area, something between 50 up to 80 um, uh, locations. Thank you very much, Professor Arab Ahmadi, for that concise introduction. Now, the Swahili language obtained many vocabularies from Persian language. Persian poets influenced the Swahili literature through their classic works. The influence of Persian architecture is seen in Shirazi building style throughout East African coastal towns, including Lamu. Actually, Lamu is the oldest and best preserved Swahili settlement in East Africa. The influence of Persian architecture is also clearly visible in former Swahili city-states including Mombasa, Zanzibar and Kilwa. Founded in the 40th century, the Great Mosque of Kilwa was one of the major Persian heritage sites in Tanzania. Two important structures dating from this era still stand. The first is the Great Mosque, which was built in the 14th century and was once the largest mosque in sub-Saharan Africa. The other is the palace at Husuni Kubwa, built between 1315 and 1330 and renowned for its spectacular pools and courtyards. Now let's bring in Professor Abdul Sharif of Zanzibar. Thank you for your time, Professor Abdul Sharif. We have heard from Dr. Arab Ahmadi here how Shirazis moved to East Africa. Now, do we still have ethnic Iranian Shirazis in East Africa? When they came to East Africa, they intermarried with the local people. And in fact, we have a, a writing one of the oldest traditions, the Kilwa tradition, a chronicle, in which it says that uh, Hassan bin Ali, the person who came uh, so many uh, centuries ago, uh, married the daughter of the local chief. And therefore, his children then became legitimate from his side as well as from, from the mother's side. So what we should expect is not to find community of Persian-looking people now remaining exclusive somewhere. They have intermarried for a thousand years now. And so you'll find them from brown to black. But you ask them, what is your origin? They'll say, we are Shirazi. And they will recount their history. So in that sense, they are Shirazi, not racially, uh, but because they have been mixed for a thousand years. Thank you for that, Professor Abdul Sharif, a leading historian and researcher in Tanzania. The Shirazis brought Persian traditions and customs to East Africa. They also intermarried with the local communities. Kiswahili, the language of the East African coastal regions, contains many Persian loan words. The Kiswahili language is now not just confined to East Africa after being declared an official language of the African Union. And now we are back to the studio with our guest, Professor Arab Ahmadi. Uh, Professor, uh, can you elaborate to us on how uh, the Shirazis impacted on the culture of uh, East Africans? Yeah, this is a very deep question and yeah. of course uh, should have an extensive answer. Yeah. To be honest, due to long-standing uh, settlement of Shirazis in East African coast and island, yeah. approximately 500 years, uh, and of course since they established a very friendly relation yeah. with uh, I mean indigenous people of East African coast mm -hmm. uh, and through intermarriage mm -hmm. uh, and of course uh, based on equality which was very very important for mm -hmm. Africans yeah. um, they transferred either directly or indirectly some part of Iranian culture and of course customs to East African yeah. uh, indigenous people. Okay. For example, uh, they have been very influential for enrichment of Kiswahili language. Yeah. Uh, right now, there have been uh, more than 500 uh, patient wards yeah. uh, which have been 
inherited and now used uh, in day-to-day -day interaction by uh, Swahili-speaking Swahili people. Yeah. Either those who, I mean, Swahili language is considered as the first language mm -hmm. or second language, yeah. no different. Yeah. And, you know, this uh, reality has been uh, recognized by Swahili Academy of Kenya and Tanzania. Yeah. Apart from uh, patient votes, uh, we will see a strong traces of uh, Persian or Farsi uh, literature yeah. uh, on Swahili literature. Some great Iranian uh, poets such as Saadi, yeah. Ferdowsi, Khayyam and Hafiz yeah. uh, have been influential, of course, indirectly through uh, to, uh, Swahili um, culture and Swahili literature. If we have a look at, for example, Utenzi, yeah. or, uh, for example, Fiumu Lungu Legend, uh, or Inkishafi, yeah. we will see a type of inspiration. Yeah that those who made such this legend and uh, books uh, have received from Iranian yeah. uh, literature. And of course, definitely uh, Shirazi uh, have, had been actually link yeah. of, you know, this uh, cultural and uh, literally proximity. Professor Arab Ahmadi, can you uh, briefly also elaborate on the impact uh, of uh, Shirazi architecture, especially in the construction of mosques uh, in East Africa? Yes, thank you very much. Very good question. Uh, yeah, we will see uh, the deep influence of Shirazis uh, in East African coast in particular uh, in the form of construction of uh, mosques. Yeah. And of course, stone building. Uh, for example, if we have a look to Kilwagan Mosque yeah. or Hosoni Kuba Palace yeah. or Hosoni Endogo yeah. or some uh, mausoleum attribute to uh, Shirazi kings, yeah. uh, we will see uh, exactly um, the presence and prevalence of Iranian architectural yeah. uh, style, uh, for example, in terms of arc, which mm -hmm. has been used, uh, for example, uh, columns, yeah. uh, bricks, uh, yeah. for example, dooms yeah. that for the first time uh, was used uh, in, uh, in the history of uh, East African uh, coast.